Good afternoon, and thank you for tuning in to Do You Know My Father? Today we're going to talk about pride, a biblical look at pride. The purpose of this newsletter and every one that I do is to strike down the lies of Satan in the hearts and the minds of people, to exalt the Word of God, to shine a light into the darkness, to be a watchman and to stand in the gap, to be free from people's blood in hopes that they come to the knowledge of the truth. Ezekiel 22 verse 30 says, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me in the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. So I'm trying to be one of those men. Let's take a look at pride. I've studied this subject throughout the scriptures. However, if I compiled all the scriptures and facts and thoughts, it would make a book. There's something I'd like to make clear. I'm not saying that I am sinless or without pride. I have asked Yehovah why he wants me to write about pride when I still see it in myself. Two of the reasons I know of are because I'm not saying that pride is good. And many people in the church today, or the congregation of believers, are saying that. The other reason is that pride is decreasing in me and humility is increasing in me by the grace of God. Remember he said, he must increase and I must decrease. That's the same for all of us, to be more like God and less like ourselves. So what is pride anyway? Pride is the root of all sin. There is not one sin that you could name that could not be traced back to pride. I would go as far as to say that the two words of pride and sin are inseparable. You can't have one without the other. When we choose to do things our way instead of God's way, in any area, it's pride. Because we think we know better than God. Pride is haughty, arrogant, vain, which means empty, boastful or bragging, puffed up, high-minded, self-esteem, or the exaltation of self. I've heard people say that low self-esteem is the same as humility. This assumption is false. We are not to esteem ourselves, whether it be high or low. Low self-esteem is still self, not God. Humility is a God thing. It doesn't matter whether the lawnmower throttle is idled high or low. Either way, it's still running. Daniel was highly esteemed, but not by himself. The prophet Daniel was esteemed by God. And look what God did through him. God isn't looking for people that have high or low self-esteem. God is looking for people that are humble, not self-willed, but God-willed. If you have any kind of self-esteem, your engine is still running. So take yourself to the off position and let Yahashua be the master of your life. Yahashua said, why call me master and not do the things I say? So why does pride exist? God gave us a free will. God will not force people to love him. Love is not something that can be forced. It is given freely or it's not given at all. God gives us a free will. We're not robots. We have a choice. We have a choice to love or hate, obey or disobey, be kind or rude, be patient or impatient, gentle or angry, be faithful or unfaithful, be joyful or grumpy, give glory to God or to ourselves. We have a choice to follow Yahashua or Satan. We have the right to choose heaven or hell. The right to choose the truth or the lie, to be humble or to be prideful. 
What we find is that we are incapable of anything truly good until God's love is poured out into us by His Spirit coming to dwell in us. And this cannot happen until we repent of our sin by believing the gospel of our Messiah. Now there may be some things like uh, David's child that said there was something good found in him. There may be things like that. I, I'm talking about where you would be going to heaven. None of us are good enough to go. That's why he sent his son to pay the price. We can't earn it. None of us are good enough in that re in that regard. It doesn't mean that you haven't ever done any something, something good. It's just that your good works will never produce salvation. Otherwise, he wouldn't have died. He wouldn't have needed to if we could work our way there, if we could be good enough on our own. The good news is we don't have to. We don't have to keep score like that or anything. We just need to trust in him for our salvation because of that and what he did for us and how he's loved us. We should in turn love him and see that his commandments are good and keep them by the power of the Spirit in us. Romans 7 verse 18 says, Know that nothing good lives in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have a desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. This will not happen until God's grace draws us to him. The hearts of mankind are wicked as long as this is so. Pride will exist. Where does pride come from? It comes out of the heart. Mark chapter 7, verse 20 through 23. And he said, That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile a man. See, so pride is an evil thing. There's no such thing as a good pride. And I've talked to people about this for years, and only one person's ever received this. That usually make excuses because they don't want to let go of it. Because it's so deeply rooted into people. Um, pride was the cause of the fall of the devil. The sin of pride is so deeply rooted that it goes back to the fall of Lucifer, who is now known as Satan or the devil. Also in Revelation 12, 3, and verse 9, verse 13, and chapter 20 in Revelation, verse 2. He's known as the red dragon. In Job 41, 34, in this passage of Scripture, it is plain to see this is a red dragon, and it says that this red dragon is king over all the children of pride. Ezekiel 29 talks about the dragon in the midst of Egypt, and how it exalted itself, and that God would make Egypt a base nation. And so it is today, never to be a great power again, all because of pride. Also, it talks about the dragon and the fish sticking to its scales, that God would leave thee thrown into the wilderness, and thee and all the fish of the rivers. This parallels Revelation 12.9. And the dra great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels with him, which are now demons. Yehoshua says in Luke 10.18, And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. First Timothy 3, 6 says that new believers shouldn't be leaders in the church, not a novice. A new convert is what a novice means. Lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. This is what happened to Lucifer, which means shining one. And some people say, well, you shouldn't call him that. He's the devil, but... You know, it says that Satan can appear as an angel of light. 
says his, his demons can appear as ministers of righteousness. So we need to be very careful that they don't deceive us. Isaiah 14, verse 4 through 20 says, how art, thou, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. Remember what I said about Satan and his demons appearing as angels of light? That's 2 Corinthians 11, verse 14 and 15. So he still shines, but only in a false appearance. He is darkness, and his path leads to hell. Satan tried to exalt himself, and Satan fell. Proverbs 16, verse 18 says, Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. So when you see a destruction and a fall, what you're seeing a lot of times is there was pride and a haughty spirit before that happened. Pride was the cause of the fall of mankind. In the Garden of Eden, before the fall of mankind, man had peace with God. Adam and Eve walked with God. They had all they would ever need. God told them they couldn't eat from one tree. And if they did, that they would surely die. Then the devil came along to tempt Eve to destroy the peace and love that mankind had with God. The devil called God a liar and said that they wouldn't die if they disobeyed God. Then told them the lie. And what is the lie that is still being told to people by the devil today? That ye shall be as gods. God didn't lie to them. They would not have seen death if they obeyed. Death did not come into the world until after they sinned from that moment. They died spiritually and physically. This is why people die every day. Our fault, not God's fault. If you are reading this and believe that God is who you are and that you don't need to believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Yahashua the Messiah to be born again, but that God is in everyone and everything by works or self-enlightenment, that we can achieve God's status, then you are deceived and heading to hell. Repent, for the time is near when Yehovah will judge the whole of mankind. No flesh will glory in his presence. Repent, please, and be saved from the wrath that is to come. Romans 5.1 says, You can have peace with God by truly receiving Yahashua as Messiah and Savior of your life. Words we find in the Bible that are synonymous with pride, one of them is proud. Proverbs 16.5 says, Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to God. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. Remember, abomination is the Hebrew word toeba. It means detestable and loathsome thing. This is what we see happening with the false peace that is coming. People will pat each other on the back and join hand in hand, encouraging each other in their evil practices. Scripture says, Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there will be which go in there. That's Matthew 7.13. The world says majority rules, but the Bible says that God rules. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to God. So if you don't want to be disgusting and loathsome and detestable in the eyes of Yehovah, your creator, humble yourself and obey his commands. In the Greek, pedeluktos means unlawful, disgusting. Titus 1.16 talks about people that say they know God, but their lives by their lives they deny him. It goes on to say that they are abominable, disobedient unto every good work, reprobate when we're reprobate it means we do things that shouldn't be done we're just kind of uh, 
insane or crazy when we're a reprobate. Boast. Boast is another word for pride. In the Greek, it's kachome, to boast, brag about, glory in. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 9 says, For by grace we are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, not of works, lest any man should boast. See, there's nothing to brag about. Please note that what makes boasting good or evil is the object of the boast. If you boast in Yehovah, it is good. If you boast about anyone or anything else, it's evil. Another word is arrogance. Hebrew, gaon, glory, pride, arrogance. Greek is atak, arrogant. So for arrogance, you got the Hebrew word gaon, and you got the Greek word atak. And 1 Samuel 2, verse 1 through 3 says, And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiced in Yehovah. My horn is exalted in Yehovah. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies, because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is none holy as Yehovah, for there is none beside thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. Take more so exceedingly proudly, let not arrogancy come out of your mouth, for Yehovah is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. Proverbs 8.13 says that God hates pride and arrogance. The fear of Yehovah is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the froward mouth do I hate. So God hates pride. There's no good pride. Isaiah 13, 11, And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. God says he will cause the prideful and the arrogant to cease. Another word is haughty. The Greek is hyper ephanos, means showing oneself above others or when you put people down to exalt yourself. There's a lot of that going on, isn't there? Now, when you speak the truth, people try to accuse you of this kind of thing. Oh, who do you think you are? Do you think you're perfect? No, that's not it at all. Because of love, we say the truth, and we hope that everybody will come to it. It's the only reason we're here on the earth to do this Greek word is found in Romans 1.30 and 2 Timothy 3.2, where the word proud is found in the authorized version. Once again, Romans chapter 1 and 2 Timothy 3 are not good lists to find yourself in. Okay? Vain glory is another word. The Greek is kinodoxia, vain, empty glory. Philippians 2.3 says, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. It's being servant-hearted, isn't it? This is not mean to flatter people. When people flatter, they are giving you the glory instead of giving glory to God for what he has done in your life. We are to be humble, to lift them up in prayer, and to encourage them in Yehovah. I often hear people claim, to be believers doing this, vainglorying, they talk more about what they did as an unbeliever than what the Holy Spirit is doing in them now. They act macho and talk about what they would do if they weren't a believer. They vainglory in this past life. That wasn't life. It was death. It was empty, vain. Scripture says a whitewashed pig will return to lay down in the mud. Also, a dog will lick up its vomit. When we started and start glorying in our empty, miserable past as an unbeliever, we are doing nothing less than returning to the poop and the vomit. We really are. The word vain, in the Greek it's kineos, empty, meteos, void of results. Empty and void of results. How would you like to get up and go again today and tomorrow and the next day and you don't get anywhere? It's just empty results. 
When we do that, live without God, that's what we're doing. Matthew 6, verse 7, But when you pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathen do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. I've heard people pray a rehearsed prayer, and when they prayed, they prayed over their food 100 miles an hour. It was vain, empty, of any sincerity and love for God. Sometimes people pray like it's just a checklist. Well, that's done. I can check it off and feel good about myself now. To believers, I hope you will heed these words. You may think that a person only takes God's name in vain when there is a curse word attached to it. But I tell you, when you pray and use Jehovah's name to fill in the blanks because you can't think of anything else to say, that is using his name in a vain way. It is using it in an empty way, without the reverence that is due to our holy God. Slow down. The next time you pray, I challenge you to examine your words. You know, people are always saying little catchy Christian lyrics over and over again. Do you catch yourselves just singing the same lines over and over without even thinking about what you're saying and who you're saying it to? We are to pray without ceasing, but what we pray should be out of a sincere heart and with a love for God in accordance with his word. Matthew fifteen nine, But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. When people turn away from God's commands, they make up their own because they are lovers of themselves and not lovers of God. Yahashua said, if we love him, we will obey what he commands. His commands are found in the Bible. For Yahashua said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. That's John 8, verse 31 through 32. Has Yahashua told us in his word how God is to be worshipped? The answer is yes. John 4, verse 23 and 24 says, For the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. In order to do this, we must be born again of God's Spirit and know and live His Word. Someone may say that they can worship God however they want to. We know from the above scripture that this statement is untrue and that they are in vain in their worship. They're deceived in going through the motions of religious self-righteousness. The scripture says there is a way that seemeth right to a man, but that ends in death. That's Proverbs 14, 12. So follow God's instructions and you'll be fine. Are you reading his instructions? I encourage you to. The next word is high-minded. It comes from the Greek word typho. I don't know if that's where we get typhoon or not, but typho. Wrapped in smoke, it means filled up with pride. Romans 12, 3 says, For I say... Through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. Have you ever known anyone who you could say was blowing smoke? Some people I know come to mind about this form of pride. When they talked, they lied. You knew it, and they knew it. They just wouldn't get real or honest. Nothing I said seemed to break through the smoke screen they were wrapped up in. Till I prayed and God revealed that it was pride. I then taught about pride and it was revealed to them that they were not clothed with Messiah but with smoke. When you are close, close to the fire, you smell like smoke, don't you? Our next scripture for high-minded is Romans 11.20. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. Talking about the fear of God. We just went through all that, didn't we? In this verse, the Greek word epsophronio, to be arrogant or proud. 
What does the proper mindset of the believer look like? Our praise, our confidence, our trust, etc. is in Messiah, not in ourselves. We should rejoice for what God is doing in us or someone else, for the scripture says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's talking about fear of God. For it is God which worketh in you. See, he's doing it, but he wants us to be along for with it. Philippians 2, verse 12 through 13 is what that was. Also, he that started a good work in you will finish it unto completion. See, he's faithful. He will do it. Philippians 4, 13 says, I can do all things through Messiah Yahashua, which strengthens me. Apart from him, I can do nothing. John 15, 5 says, all things are possible with God. Mark 10, 27 says, no flesh shall glory in his presence. So we can't take credit. You got to give him the glory. 1 Corinthians 1, 29 says, he is the master. We are only his instruments that he uses for his glory. There are many ways pride manifests itself, people. But let's look at a few of them. Spiritual pride. This happens when someone thinks they are more spiritual than someone else. Now, obviously, people are at different places in their walk with him than others, but we are not to be haughty about it. When you look at yourself compared to Messiah, you will grow in humility. When you look at yourself compared to someone else or someone else based on your walk, you fall into spiritual pride. This is where someone would say, you can't say anything about me and my walk with God because you are being spiritually prideful. This belief is untrue. In summary, there is to be judgment in the body of Messiah, the church. The judgment is to be righteous. That is by the Spirit of God and the believer, according to the Word of God. When this happens, it is to the honor of God, for the purging of the body of believers and edification of the saints. The person who is in the sin of spiritual pride, their motive is to exalt self. Put the other believer down, and all this being done without love, and it dishonors God. The man that is humble does it the correct way. We have far too much judging going on in the church that is unrighteous, and we lack so much judgment in the church today that is righteous. But even when you speak to people and tell them the truth, they, they hate you for that. That's what's so sad. Luke 9, verse 46 through 48. Then there arose a reasoning among them, which of them should be greatest. And Yahashua, perceiving the thought of their heart, took a child and set him by him. And he said unto them, Whosoever shall receive this child in my name, receiveth me. Think about that with all the abortion going on. How many children have been rejected and murdered in the womb? And he said, Whoever shall receive this child in my name receiveth me. So when we have rejected these children, we have rejected him. That is so sad. And whosoever shall receive me receiveth him that sent me. For he that is least among you, the same shall be great. So we're great when we receive a child. And we're not when we don't. Luke 18, verse 9 through 14. And he spoke this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I'm not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterous, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humble himself shall be exalted. I know last time that I spoke on here, I was getting upset and fired up about some things, and it's right to be 
fired up to a point, but I had to just calm myself down and humble myself. Pride of race. There's a lot of that going on, a lot of hatred today because of of uh, race, racism, color. Now they're trying to call racism after about everything. They don't agree with what they say. Acts chapter 17, verse 26 says, He made all people from one blood. There's only one race. The reason we have different color skin is because of a thing in our body called melanin. In fact, scientists have discovered that there is one major pigment called melanin that produces our skin color. There are two main forms of melanin, eumelanin, white to black, and pheomelanin, red to yellow. These combine to give us the particular shade of skin that we have. I got this out of the Answers in Genesis book, page 227, if you care to check into that. I'm thankful that they did that study. In this we see whites, Spanish, Negroes, Indian, Chinese, etc. So it is so as the children's song says, red, brown, yellow, black, and white, they are precious in his sight. Yahashua loves the little children of the world. Man looks at the outward, but God looks at the heart. 1 Samuel, if we are believers, we look at the heart. When we see color, we see it biblically. It doesn't matter to me what color the person is my children marry. I know some people might have a hard time with that, but I don't. When I say my people, it doesn't have anything to do with color. I'm speaking of the people of God. The Bible says not to marry an unbeliever. As long as my children marry strong, true believers, that's what God says is important. Okay? So he said, who are my mother, my sister, my brother? Who are my people? He said, those that hear the word of God and obey it. There's so much division and hatred over the color of someone's skin. And we need to get past this. It's just tearing us apart. God said to love him and love one another. If we would just do that, there would be so much good happening. It would be such a blessed world. The devil wants us to hate God and hate one another, and he seems to be getting a lot of obedience his way. Why don't we obey our Father, who's telling us the right thing to do? Pride of position or status. You know about that. Pride of position or status. Sometimes they say authority went to somebody's head, right? Luke fourteen seven through 9 says, and he put forth a parable to those which were bidden when he marked how they chose out the chief rooms, saying unto them, When thou art bidden of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room, lest a more honorable man than thou be bidden of him. And he that bade thee and him come and say to thee, Give this man place, and thou begin with shame to take the lowest room. So don't pick out the best place for yourself. Somebody else might come in and they might put them in your spot and you'd been better off to sit in a lower lower place and let them bring you to a better place instead of putting yourself at the top taking the biggest cookie for yourself so to speak making yourself number one we aren't number one god is i want to tell you a story a man had three sons he was walking down the street one day and he ran into a friend from high school. They got to talking, and the man asked about his children and what they did for work. He proudly said, My son Jeff is a doctor, and my son Scott is a lawyer. The man said, I thought the last time we had run into each other, you said you had three sons. What does other son do for work? And the man looked very embarrassed, looked down at the ground, and said in a very quiet voice, He is a garbage man. Isn't it great that God sent forth his son to get the garbage out of our lives? And the word says the father is pleased with him. Mankind looks at the outward, but God looks at the heart, shouldn't we? 1 Samuel 16 verse 7 says that even Samuel the prophet wouldn't have chosen David to be king. He thought it was surely one of the other boys. 
Matthew 18, 4 says, Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Isn't that something? Little children don't care what color anybody is. They just want to play together. It's the hatred that gets put into them by their parents or by by somebody. But it's not there to start with. God's way is the opposite of the world's way. If you want to have life, you must learn to die to yourself. If you want to be great, you must become nothing in your own eyes. Be a servant. If you want to be strong, you must become weak in the way of the world and strong for him because his strength is made perfect in our weakness. If you want to be rich, you must become poor. Joshua said, Anyone who loses his life for my sake shall find it for eternal life, and the least of you shall be the greatest. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. My friends, be rich towards God, and I'll see you for part two next time. Thanks for tuning in to Do You Know My Father. <laughs>